Hi, welcome to Sarah Lily Makes. My name is Sarah and I am the maker behind the channel. This is my little journaling space here on YouTube where I like to document and share all of the things that I have been working on, mostly knitting. I also sew and I chair a costume committee for our local children's theater program. And that's just not things that I can publicly share at the moment. So I won't really talk about that too much. Um, this is a regular podcast episode where I'm going to talk about all the things that I knitted in February and I'm a little late <laughs> because February was a little bit overwhelming and busy and hectic for us because we just finished two shows, Narnia the Musical and Little Women, where I chaired the costume committee with another mom. And it's just, we're just finally winding down. I still have a ton of laundry in my house from the shows. But we're just winding down. I have a week before we start the next show. And so I thought now would be a convenient time for me to record an episode before things get chaotic again. Um, so yes, today's episode is going to be a regular podcast episode where I talk about the things that I've worked on in the month of February. So let's get into it. But before we get into it, let me talk about what I'm wearing. I'm wearing the Ingrid sweater, which is a pattern from Petite Knit. If you are a knitter, you are probably familiar with this pattern. This is an all over texture and fall cabling garment. There is a lattice um, portion here and a lattice portion here that is made with mock cables. And I feel like this garment really got me <laughs> very interested in textures and cables. And this was kind of like the startup for me to dive deeper into more texture garments. And I really enjoyed knitting this up. I made this in late spring 2022, at least around the time when the pattern was released. And I knitted this with St. Garn's Double Sunday and Tin Silk Mohair in the color Almond, which was the Petite Knit color collaboration colorway, I think. Yeah, it's Almond. And yes, that is a Petite Knit colorway. Um, so yeah, I love this garment. I wear it quite often and I really love my sleeve length. I made it slightly long. It kind of covers my bum, <laughs> which is fine. It's a little oversized and I like that about my winter, fall, winter, spring sweaters. So that's not a problem for me. And yeah, this is my Ingrid sweater from Petite Knit. Let's dive into my finished objects. I have two finished objects that I finished off in February and I have numerous whips because I just kept compulsively casting on new things to kind of cope with some stress of February. So I have a number of whips, but I have two finished objects and they were whips in my last episode. And the first one that I have is the Philippe Cozy Genser, which is a pattern from San Scarn. <laughs> this I knitted for my younger son and I made the size 12. And I knitted this with San Scarn's Poppy in Above the Clouds. So the pattern is available in this booklet, booklet 2313. And this was released in conjunction with the yarn Poppy which was released toward the end of last year. So there are a few patterns in here. Let me see, I think there are three patterns or two. One, two patterns, an adult and a child. The adult size is the Hadley and the child is the Philippe Cozy Genser. I have made the Hadley in with different yarn compositions twice now and I do still wanna make the Hadley with the poppy yarn Hopefully I'll get to that. It 
is has been part of my winter plans and I've not been doing very well on getting that done but nevertheless <laughs> it's something that's been on my mind to make and hopefully I'll get to that but we're talking about this one the Philippe Cozy Genser and I made the size 12 like I said I think this this is a really fun, very basic, very straightforward knit. There is a nine stitch ribbed raglan detail. That's just really fun. And I really, it's just a little accent, I think, that just elevates the pattern a little bit more than just a basic raglan sweater. And I like that a lot. Um, it has a folded collar and short row shaping for the back and then um, I might have made the sleeves just a tad shorter than what I intended to make for my child <laughs> but it's okay it fits him fine in the sleeves for the time being I did make it longer in the body so he has room to grow and then I made the sleeves shorter than it didn't it doesn't really like align with you know like a longer body and anyway it's okay, I have extra yarn. I have like half of a ball left. I have more than that, but for the purpose of adding to this garment, I have half of a ball that I could use to lengthen the sleeves if necessary. But I think for right now it works and I don't need to do that. But if the need arises, I have the yarn and I could add to the sleeves. So um, the colorway, I can't remember if I mentioned or not, is above the clouds. And what I really like about this yarn is that it kind of gives a hand-dyed kind of effect that, I mean, it's a commercial yarn and they do have some speckled yarn that they've now started introducing in the past couple of months. And I think it's fun. I thoroughly enjoyed hand-dyed yarn and I enjoy speckled yarn. I enjoy knitting with speckled yarn a lot. And I just think that it's really fun. It just adds to the, it just makes it a little bit more handmade in my opinion, because it looks like it's hand dyed yarn. I don't think I have anything else to say about this pattern. Um, I think that's really it for this finished object. Um, I have mentioned before that this yarn is very similar to Saint Iscarn's Cos. So Poppy, I'll just briefly share a bit about the yarn again. Po uh, Poppy is uh, comprised of 50% superfine alpaca, 35% cotton, and 15% merino wool. And it's comparable to their Cos yarn, which is also a blown yarn. Both of these yarns are blown. This is the Poppy and this is the Cos. Uh, cost is 62% baby alpaca, 9% wool, and 29% nylon. So both of these yarns are blown yarns. The poppy is a cotton core, and the cost is a nylon core. And the only other difference, besides, you know, the fiber composition being slightly different, is that the cost is 150 meters per 50 gram ball, and the Poppy is 110 meters per 50 gram ball, per 50 gram ball. But in my opinion, they are very alike and they are comparable. Knitting, the, the knitting experience is very comparable. And yeah, I think that covers it now for the pattern and fiber content. I do have to add that this pattern goes up from size 2 to 12 years old. So if you are interested in this yarn and this pattern, it is Sandis Garn's 2313 booklet from last year. And moving on to my second finished object. This was barely started in my last episode. And I haven't even had a chance to take pictures in it yet. This is the Facile cardigan, which is also a pattern from Sandis Garn. So this is the Facile cardigan. 
um, pattern 2402-2. So if you watched my last episode, <laughs> you might have seen me just <laughs> slightly going off on my thoughts, my incoherent thoughts on the newest collection, how they how they have started distributing their collections. Send this card. I was having mixed feelings. I still am having mixed feelings, but I feel like it's been three months now, two and a half months, two months and a week. And I've had a little bit more time to process my emotions on, <laughs> on how they are releasing their patterns. And I still have mixed feelings on it. I am still not quite happy with it's, I miss having a, book, a big booklet full of patterns to pick from and to knit from. So I, I apologize, my toddler's right here. You might hear some noises. She's keeping me company today. I'm still having mixed feelings on how they are releasing their booklets, their patterns. I get it from a business standpoint, they want I, this is my assumption anyway, they want their patterns to be knitted only with their yarns, which is, you know, from a business perspective, they have every right to want that because it's their business. Uh, I just, I miss having a giant booklet to peruse and to, you know, just imagine myself making this garment without having to purchase every single pattern from the collection which I am kind of finding myself wanting to do because I thoroughly enjoy their patterns. I enjoy their booklets. I enjoy their yarn. Like, I'm still going to get it because I'm just slightly obsessed with seeing this yarn. And, yeah. So if you watched my last episode, you might have seen me ramble and rant about how they are releasing their new patterns and just like they're entitled to release it however they want i am also entitled to have an opinion about it so it's a bummer to me i think that they have changed how they release their patterns but yeah anyway this is <laughs> let's get back to the actual pattern please this is the Facile sweater. This is their second collection of the year, 2402, 2402, and the second pattern from this collection. I knitted it with, wait a second, is that the right one? No, that's not the right one. I can't find the right the pattern. This is the two strands of Ballerina Chunky Mohair. And, oh, I found it. <laughs> this is the pattern. Okay, 24, 2402-1. So the first pattern from this collection. And I made it in the exact shade that is pictured on their pattern booklet because I kind of wanted... <laughs> I just, I liked that outfit and I kind of wanted to recreate it. So why not? So I finished this uh, cardigan in... It took me much longer than I had really intended to spend the amount of time that I spent on this because I was just, it was February, it was a busy month, I wasn't knitting as much as I had really wanted to knit. So this took almost three weeks, I think, and it, I mean, it's fine, it's, the time is of no consequence. It's just, it, I didn't intend to take as long on this project as I did. And I found that working with a single strand of this yarn was not as enjoyable as working with it held double. So in my last episode I knitted the Facile sweater with two strands of the Ballerina Chunky Mohair, which is also used in this pattern except it's a single strand and it was just not the most enjoyable knitting experience. I found I was just having trouble just managing the yarn with a metal needle, which is my preferred needle of choice. 
and I only have metal needles in my needle collection anyway. So it wasn't the most enjoyable knitting experience, but it was fine. Um, yeah, so I, it's, yeah, I, I enjoy having this cardigan. I just didn't enjoy knitting it as much as I thought, I thought I would. So there is really no finishing on this garment. Like you just do the slip, slip, slip the end, knit the first something or the other, however it's done to keep, to create the neat, even edge without having to do any finishing on it and it's fine I don't I had considered going back and working an eye cord along the edge but I like the edge the way it is right now so I don't think that I want to go back and finish another thing about this yarn is that with how fine the core is and how fluffy the fibers around the core is I like dropped stitches without realizing and I had to go back in I don't think it's it might be here or I would like accidentally pick up I don't know if you could see that but there's like a bit of a hole because I accidentally picked up the yarn without knitting into it and it's just it creates like a yarn over almost and I'm not <clears throat> I'm not like too mad about it but there was a, a part here where I had dropped a stitch and I didn't realize until I was like all the way down so I just ended up picking it up from the inside and just weaving some yarn in and you might be able to see it there and then another thing that I did which I did not really mean to do was on one of the edges I didn't actually knit it. That's, I don't. Th yeah, right here. So I'm. I'm not gonna do. Like you could barely see the loop. Probably not. But there's a loop right there that's not knitted. Me. So you could barely see the loop there. But I'm not gonna go do anything because I feel like the yarn is fuzzy enough where it kind of just attaches itself to the rest of the the garment. So it's not a big deal. I probably didn't even need to weave that in. It kind of just looks sloppy, but it's okay. And then there was one other spot on the sleeves where I did another accidental yarn over and I decided I caught it early on and I decided to fix it. But in fact, did not really fix. So it's kind of got like a little bit of laddering going on. It's Oh, that's really hard to see, huh? I did it twice, actually, <laughs> now that I see it. And I try. I went down and I undid the yarn over. And then I just, I didn't have to pick up any stitches because it was an accidental yarn over. And I thought it would block out, but it did not, in fact, block out. It's okay. I might just rewash it and try to reblock it a second time and kind of just maneuver the fabric a little bit to try to get it to even out a little bit more, but I don't know if that will solve the problem. Probably not. Anyway, the cuffs and the uh, finishing of the hem is done with a uh, ribbing and then Italian bind off. And that was fine except one of my cuffs are a little bit tighter than the other. Um, this one is fine, it stretches enough, but this one, I might need to go back and it's just, there's no give at all. So I might need to go back and fix that and redo the Italian bind off. I'm not completely happy with how this project turned out. I do really love the cardigan. I love the color a lot, I've been wanting to add more color to my wardrobe and I was really hoping that this would be you know a project that I would really love I do love the project I just didn't enjoy the knitting experience and then a couple of problems that I ran into with the yarn itself but that's really not the yarn's fault but mostly user error probably <laughs> 
I could have been paying more attention to my knitting as I was knitting it and not have run into those problems. But yeah, overall I do enjoy this yarn and I do want to knit the Facile with it held double because I did enjoy that knitting experience for my Facile sweater in my last episode where I held the yarn double and I liked it a lot more <laughs> than just knitting with it single. But yeah, that is my Facile sweater, sweater cardigan, Facile cardigan 2402-1 from Santa Garn. And the yarn that I used is the Ballerina Chunky Mohair held single in the color lemon. Let's see what color it is here. I'm pretty sure it's lemon, but the color is, yeah. Lemon 9004 and I used five, almost five balls of this. I have a little bit left over, but I used almost five balls of this yarn for a size medium. Those are my finished objects and I have a couple of whips. Um, my whips and acquisitions kind of go hand in hand because not all of them, but some of them anyway. Um, I'm going to start with my longest standing whip and then at least from <laughs> for this year because I have whipped some last year that's just sitting, but those are just lingering. I will talk about what I'm currently working on. My first whip is something that was a whip in my last episode and I didn't mark where I was because I was kind of hoping I'd be done by now. <laughs> just okay yes thank you um I was hoping I'd be done by now but that's just you know false hope <laughs> I am nowhere near done but that's okay I'm kind of close to being done with the body and there are lots of things hanging because it is a bottom up sweater and this is the Magna cable sweater now I'm gonna show you where I was the last episode I was about here I didn't mark I was about here. I didn't mark where. So I had knitted that much in January. And I didn't mark where it was because I, yeah, like I said, I was kind of hoping to be done by now. Lies. This is a bottom up, completely all over cable texture sweater from Rauma Garn. And this is the booklet 425, uh, this booklet. And it is for, the patterns in this booklet are to use their, what is it called? Fivil, Fivil yarn. I'm pretty sure it's, that's how it's pronounced. Anyway, this is a bottom up, like I said, all over. <laughs> cable garment and I have been really enjoying knitting on this. I have put it down quite a few times for like a week at a time. So I'd knit on it quite a bit, then I'd put it down for a week, then I'd pick it back up and then I'd put it down for another week. So I started this at the beginning of January. Let me just double check when I actually started this. Yeah, no, the end of January. I started this January 26th. So I finished the back, so it's a bottom up. You knit all the way up to the arm holes, then you uh, bind off some stitches on both arm holes, and then you put the front on hold, and then you knit all the way up the back, then you bind off stitches for the neck, where the neck band is going to go, so these stitches are bound off here, but then you put the shoulders on hold, for the back, which I did with some stitch holder cable cords. And then I picked up the front and I am pretty close to where I need to bind off stitches for the front neck. So I put two cable, not cable, two stitch markers here to here. So from here to here, I am going to bind off these 20 something stitch and then start working the left and the right fronts. 
I think I start with the left front first. Anyway, um, I think what has been really helping me like keep track from the start and I think after maybe halfway through I didn't really need to keep track of it but these stitch markers here to divide the individual cables really helped me know <laughs> where I was and to keep track of the individual cables. Um, I have knit an all over, multiple all over cable sweaters but it's not the entire garment is made with cables. It's like texture and fall cables and cables um, or just one single cable the entire garment but um, I wasn't necessarily concerned that I would you know lose track or anything but I just felt for peace of mind I would just start it doing that and it really helped me just keep track of everything um, I think I have maybe one, two, three, four or four or six more um, rows to go before I start separating for the right and the left. And I am kind of actually intimidated by that part. I, like, separating for the front and the back was not a big deal. I feel like I'm just reverse engineering, like, a drop-down a drop shoulder top down garment so I feel like it'll be okay I'm not like I'm not gonna like work myself up to like stress about it I'm just gonna go with the flow and keep just trusting the process of the pattern and just um, just work it as I get to it and I can fix my problems I can fix my I'm sorry I could fix my mistakes I have I, f I feel like I've gained enough insight into working on this pattern that I'm able to fix my mistakes as I come to it. So I will try not to stress too much about that, but yeah. I haven't started on the sleeves, so you work the sleeves separately and then you seam it at the end. And I believe once you finish the fronts, you do a three needle bind off. Yes, a three needle bind off. For the to stitch the shoulders together or to join the shoulders together and that's fine I can do that easy and then just knitting the sleeves and adding attaching it I feel like that part is a little bit also kind of have me a little bit concerned but I, it'll be fine I've seamed garments together too so it will be fine <laughs> Um, yeah, that's my first whip, and this is the Magna Cable Genster. So, let's see where the armhole is right here. And it's actually the length of my Ingrid sweater right now, and it's not even blocked. I am knitting this on 4.5 millimeter needles, and... Like I said, I am knitting this with Rama, Rama Fievel. I don't remember the color, but I'll include it in the description box below. But this is a DK weight yarn. And so, yeah, I have, I've been enjoying knitting this up. The yarn isn't necessarily my favorite to knit with because it does not have a lot of give. It doesn't have a lot of stretch. And I do prefer a bouncier yarn, personally. That's just my personal knitting feelings and my knitting for my knitting enjoyment so it's not my most favorite yarn but I really love this color and I really I have been really enjoying knitting on this garment so yeah um I really I'm really I'm excited to have this I'm excited to finish this eventually <laughs> I don't think I have anything else to say about this that's it. This is my Magna. I don't even know if I said the name of this garment. This is my Magna Flettigenser or my Magna Cable Sweater. And I hope to be done with this this month. So I have this as a finished object in March. But if not, that's okay. There's no rush. There's no rush on this. And this is from their pattern booklet, Fivil Dame or woman's 
preview, I guess. My second whip is, oh, this was also a whip in my last, a cast on in my last episode. And I haven't really made a whole lot of progress, but I did want to share it still because I did, I only had like this much like up to here when I cast on and this is another Stannis Garn pattern this is the Bonnie cable sweater child edition and this is let me see the Bonnie sweater junior and this is 24 24-01-1 so this was their first this is the first pattern of the year and I have it printed because that's how I purchased it. And I purchased a PDF from Garntopia. And I'm knitting this with double, no, I'm knitting this with Sunday and Alpaca Folk Trod in bubblegum pink. And it's such a pretty pink. Oh, it's so pretty. I'm done with the back. That's why there's no yarn attached. I'm done with the back until I join in the round. So I have to pick up the shoulders, both shoulders, and knit on, and then join in the round. And I really wanna finish this also this month because I live in Northern California. We have spring until like June. So we she has time to wear this. But I just, I wanna get it done because it's so pretty and I just, I love this fabric. It's so soft. Um, not too much else to say about that, and I will move into my third whip, which is not, it's a completely new whip, and it is a test knit for Coco Amour Knitwear, and I am knitting the Montrose sweater, which is an all-over texture sweater with a lot of garter. Um, I started on this, let me see, I started on this on February 29th, <laughs> and I am really enjoying knitting this. This is knitted up with Filcolana Peruvian Highland Wool in the color 101, which is white or natural, I'm pretty sure, and I'm holding it together with Hedgehog Fibers Kid Silk Mohair in the color Disco. And this color was one of their 2023 color of the month, I think. So the Disco color was, I think, from June or July. And this is when they used to have a monthly colorway. And I think they haven't done that this year. That's, yeah, they've got a lot of gorgeous colors this way, this year anyway. So this is a really fun color and I'm really enjoying this knit. So it is all over texture. I don't know if you can really tell because of how it's blowing out. But there is um, three stripe, a three row uh, garter and then a two row knit. And that's kind of the repeat throughout the entire portion of this garment. This is really blowing out. I'll try to include a picture here if I'm able to get one before it gets too dark, um, before I upload this video. So I joined the test knit and I think it's due, I have like a week and a half left and I'm on my last, um, my last garter section before starting the ribbing, which is exciting because I, <laughs> I'm really hoping to get this done before the testing period is done. I don't have to complete the whole garment, but I would like to just for the sake of, you know, being able to complete it and give her my feedback and whatnot and block it because this is going to block out. This is just so squishy and stretchy and yeah, it's gonna block out and I can't wait to see how it blocks out because it is compressed. This is so compressed on itself. 
This reminds me of the Stornoway sweater, which I tested for her at the end of last year. That one was also compressed because of all of the garter and all of the texture. But I am almost done with the body. I am almost done with my second ball of mohair. And I this is going to last me for the rest of the sweater. So um, it's going to be hard to tell from the image here, but you might be able to see where there is a change. No, actually you might not because of how blown out it is. But I have like reiterated a few times before that I don't mind... Um, variation in my hand dyed knits my hand dyed yarn knits my knits made with hand dyed yarn I don't mind if there is variation because to me that just adds to the charm of a hand knitted garment made with hand dyed yarn and I appreciate that I don't alternate my skeins and I just like it I just it doesn't bother me. Um, but I do see that there is a slight variation like around here where there is a lot less purple here and a lot more of like the neon yellow and green. But it also, like I said, it doesn't bother me. I really like it. I like it a lot. So this is my Montrose sweater test knit for Coco Amore Knitwear. And I am really excited that I am testing this because I've been wanting to use up this yarn and I felt like it was the perfect opportunity to knit it with a neutral yarn and kind of just see how it plays together. I love using a bright speckly yarn held together with a neutral yarn and just seeing how the colors play. And it's just fun. So, yeah. I will be starting the ribbing. I want to finish the ribbing this weekend on the body and then hopefully pick up the sleeves this coming week and have it done. This is definitely going to be finished before my next episode. <laughs> Alrighty. That is my third finished object. My fourth finished object. My fourth finished object is another Sinniskarn pattern. Um, I'm very much tangled up in here right now. So this is the Hilton, let's see, I have it, I have it, I have it, yes. This is the Hilton cardigan from Sandis Garns, more, more recent collection. 24, why do I keep saying 24? 2403, collection 2403. Pattern 5. This is a gorgeous design. I just loved this. I saw the pattern and I saw the pictures on the model and I fell in love with the pattern and the color combination and I knew I had to make one. <laughs> I'm not using the exact yarn as the, um, as the sample. I am using the red, the, which is, let me just double check because I keep forgetting. I keep mixing it up. <clears throat> the red is, I'm using Poppy, which is color 4008. And I'm using Poppy Pure Gint and Poppy Alpaca Fogotrad. This is the same Poppy that I used in my Stronaway sweater. That was like my last finished object of 2023. And then I'm using Pure Gint and tin silk mohair in the color Blossom. Like, I fell in love with this pink, and I have plans for more projects with this color, different yarn composition, but I really love, I've like fallen in love with their pinks This for these um, more recent releases. I've just like really loved it. I'm just tangled up, sorry. Okay, so this is a striped cardigan and you start at the back, you do short rows, shaping the back, and then you start the stripes. Now, initially I was not keen on like the giant stripe at the back here compared to the rest. But upon making it, I realized, you know, it served a purpose. And now I actually don't, it doesn't bother me too much. And for the same at the front, 
like without having a ton of ends at the back and the front it works I would rather it have like a color, larger color block section than like 20,000 ends to weave in at the end so I was fine with it <laughs> upon realizing why you know that's why it's like that I haven't woven in any ends because I just am not ready to tackle that project yet that's that will be a project in and of itself but yeah I have done most of the I joined and have three more pairs of stripes to knit before starting the ribbon ribbing at the bottom um, so these have extra wide sleeves and I am not sure yet 100% if I want to knit it according to pattern or if I will do a couple of decreases. I have been more open-minded to extra wide sleeves as of the past year, but I still do kind of prefer a more tapered sleeve for my own like ease of like cooking and like cleaning around, cleaning up and stuff like that. Um, or just take my sweater off anyway, so it doesn't matter. But that's kind of been the main reason why I wouldn't want extra long, extra wide sleeves because I spend a lot of time in the kitchen. I don't think I have anything else to say. Oh yes, I do. So the pattern also suggests, not suggests, it's written as twisted rib for all the ribbing and I don't want to do that. I don't dislike twisted rib. No, that's a lie. I dislike twisted rib. I, I don't like doing twisted rib. I don't even like how it looks too much, to be perfectly frank. I get it. I see that it, it has a purpose for like certain garments, for the certain aesthetic, but I just don't like it too much. So I'm not going to do it. And that will be fine because I'm the one wearing this. Nobody else is wearing it, so it's fine. <laughs> and it does have a double knit button band, which I'm excited for because I really love a good double knit button band. I just like it. I like knitting it and I like how it just completely makes a garment look so much more finished than just a simple two by one by one or two by two rib. And now there's nothing wrong with ribbing. I totally love ribbing on a cardigan too, but I just love the look of a double knit button band a whole lot more. So I'm excited to do that and yeah, I think I want to have this finished soon because to me this is just such a perfect spring garment and I I'm enjoying all the spring colors this year and I'm looking forward to having this done too. That is my fourth finished object and I have one more that I just casted on two nights ago, I think. Today's Saturday and yes, I casted this on Thursday night and as you guessed, <laughs> Yes, this is another Sandness Garn pattern. And this is the mini dress. And I fell in love with this pattern as well. <laughs> I just, I had to make it. I actually had the yarn already in step, most of the yarn anyway. So the pattern, um, the yarn recommendation for this pattern is... Tin Lina and Mandarin Petite held together. I love Tin Lina. I think that is probably my favorite, along with Lina, actually. That is my favorite plant fiber to knit with. I actually hesitate to say summer fiber because I knit with wool all year round, including summer. I am a firm believer in wool is an all year round fiber. That's just my personal thoughts. I don't live in a, a humid climate in the summer so so it's perfectly acceptable for me and my personal preference to use wool all year round. Anyway, I am rambling. I am knitting this with the recommended yarn Tin Lina and Mandarin Petite. I have knitted with Mandarin Petite once before and I thoroughly enjoyed that knitting experience. Tin Lina is a 
53% cotton, 33% viscose, 14% linen yarn. And Mandarin Petite is a 100% cotton yarn. I love both. I thoroughly love knitting with Tinlina and I thoroughly love knitting with Mandarin Petite. Even though I've only knitted with Mandarin Petite once, I really enjoyed that garment. And I, it's held up incredibly well because I throw it in the washing machine. I do need to dry it in the dryer to kind of fluff it back up, but I digress. <laughs> so this is what I have so far. <laughs> um, I am knitting this on 3.5 millimeter needles, which I believe a lot of their DK weight summer dress and skirt patterns is used. The 3.5 millimeter needles is used for a lot of their DK weight summer patterns. So if you're using Lena, maybe not, not t-shirts, but like dresses and skirts. I'm perfectly happy with this and I can see why that they recommend a 3.5 millimeter needle for this fabric because it's nice and sturdy and it is very thick. So I am using, get the yarn. <laughs> I'm using Tin Lina in the color 4002. I think that is like peach. And Mandarin Petite in 1012. So I had enough of the Tin Lina for this dress, but I didn't have enough of the Mandarin Petite. So I got a couple extra balls of this, but the it's a different dye lot because I bought this, the original Mandarin Petite over a year ago. So, I anticipated that it would be a different dye lot. It's not that off, and I think with the marling of the pink yarn, it will be okay, and I'm not going to stress about it. I think it will be fine. I'm not, I'm not bothered too much by it, and yeah, maybe in a couple of months' time when this is done, I might have a different opinion, but for the time being, I am content with using two different dye lots of the Mandarin Petite. So, let's talk about the pattern a little bit. Um, I'm really excited about this pattern, first of all. I think it's a stunning dress. I am using the colors that's also in the sample, because that's who I am. <laughs> um, so, this is knit bottom up, and it's a floor length dress, and it's a lot of <laughs> it's a lot of stockinette. It's a lot of knitting in just a tube of stockinette, which I am fine with because I have been working multiple cable sweaters and I needed and I'm working a lot of purling with my Montrose sweater and my cardigan, so I needed something that was just plain stockinette. And I was very excited to cast this on and start on it. And I had been working on it for maybe like eight hours. This is eight hours. <laughs> this is about eight hours of knitting. So I am, I don't know where I'll end up when in like a month's time, but I really want this garment. So you do decrease, you cast on over 300 stitches for my size anyway, and you knit you join <clears throat> and then you knit uh, a couple of centimeters. You start a decrease, a couple of centimeters decrease. I think I've done two sets of decreases thus far and I have to do a total of 19 decreases and then I split the front and the back and then I split the right and the left at the back and then I split the right and the left at the front. It's my preferred knitting technique for knitting summer knits because I don't like knitting top down for having four sections going on a like a spaghetti strap or like a thinner strap garment, a sleeveless garment so to speak. I just prefer it going all the way up and then separating the individual portions. That's just my preferred so I was very happy that this was a bottom up garment and not a top down. Once you finish and you join everything, then you do I-cords at the neck and the sleeves. I didn't see anything about I-cords at the bottom hem, and I don't 
think I want to do I cords at the bottom hem because it is 300 and like 20 stitches speaking of 320 stitches so I ran out I actually had a false start on this twice because I didn't have enough yarn the first time I got to like 250 stitches and I was out of yarn so I recast it on and then I had whoa this much yarn <laughs> left because I just cast it on like I doubled the yarn and I recast it on and then I joined and I knit like five rounds and then I realized I twisted my join so I frogged it again and then I recast it on being very diligent about making sure I wasn't twisting it but with that many stitches and my longest needle is for this size um, is like a 32 I'm pretty sure this is 32 inches and it was just really hard to not twist it so it's okay I recast it on three times but I was excited to cast on so I didn't let it bother me too much and then I knitted this in eight hours <laughs> I don't think it's eight hours I'm exaggerating I feel like this is a lot less than eight hours but anyway I've done two decreases and I have 17 more to go and we'll see where I am in my next episode I'm gonna put a stitch marker to mark where I am because I feel like I should be more diligent with doing that okay I'm putting a stitch marker and I'm running out of time okay I'm putting a stitch marker right here all right so that is my mini dress from Sennis Garn and I'm very excited to have this I really I had been keen on knitting a dress for myself last year and I still have that as a lingering whip in one of my baskets but I really think that I will get this one made this year because I love the color I love the marling of the pink and the white yarns together which is very hard to see but I'll try to get a better picture and upload it if possible but yeah that is my last whip of the episode and I do have some acquisitions it's really all just sinus garn patterns I kind of went a little overboard with their pattern booklets because like I said I wanted to get them all because I wanted to make all of the things from their collection and that's why I enjoy getting the big pattern booklets because yeah anyway <laughs> This is the this is the Sandus Garn collection that I got. This is hold on. Um, and then I have my Hilton and so this is it. It's that's a lot. I got most of the summer ones because I am planning on doing a lot of summer knitting this year. Like I did last year, and I got a couple of balls of tin Lena and Lena to work some of these projects. Um, so that is really my plans, is to work through my whips and to start a couple more of the summer knits. And the next one that I want to make, absolutely want to make, is the Cornelia set, which is a gorgeous lace uh, t-shirt and skirt set, and I am... Um, I am lo I'm in love with this pattern. I'm in love with this design. I have to make it. I plan on making it. And <laughs> yeah. And then the other one that I absolutely need to make is the where is it? It's the blossom skirt. Not the blossom skirt. Where did it go? Okay. I can't find the pattern, but it is the skirt in this collection. I can't find the pattern. I will put a picture of it here, but the yarn that I want to use is what I also recently got. And I am planning on making it in the Blossom Pink, which is the one that's also pictured in the sample. So yeah, that is my acquisitions and my yarn booklets. Um, yeah, I rambled a lot <laughs> as per usual. I apologize. Uh, thank you for sticking around and watching my episode today and what I had to share. 
I hope you found it enjoyable and I hope you made progress on if you were knitting something or working on something. I hope you made progress on it while you were watching today's episode. Um, I do want to do a spring plans video because I have some spring and spring and summer. I think I want to combine it again like I did last year. But I want to do a spring and summer plans video because I have some plans, <laughs> if you couldn't already tell. And um, yeah, I hope to get that uploaded and made soon because that is kind of where I am right now. I'm kind of in between finishing up my winter knits and starting my spring and summer knits, if you couldn't already tell. <laughs> But yeah, I hope you enjoyed t today's episode. If you made it this far, thank you for watching and thank you for spending time with me today. And I will see you next time. Thank you for watching. Bye.